All right, folks, I want to show you some of the final parts that you're going to want to build for a, a long-term use laser, something that you're going to turn on for any substantial period of time. And that's your water jacketing, your cooling feature that's going to be needed to cool the gas inside of here to make sure the gas is going to stay at a lower temperature. That makes for a much better reaction. Uh, what you see here is this coil that I made was out of... Uh, clear oxygen tubing. It's like for people that have an oxygen tank. It actually has little ridges inside the tubing. They keep it from collapsing all the way down. Gives it a little rigidity inside of there. I've wrapped that a bunch of times all the way down, about nine inches for this coil. I was going to go all the way down and I decided to stop because I wanted to be able to show the beam inside the tube, at least for the video purposes here. Uh, off of this handle that you see, this is actually a handle from a sliding glass door. There was four of these all together on the sliding glass door, two on each side that you could carry it with. There was a wooden frame around it that that was screwed to, and it made a perfect piece for this. I've drilled a hole on either side here all the way through, out the back, and you can see here what we have is our hookups for our water line. So we've got one hookup here. We've got the other hookup right there, so we have an out and an in. We can just hook this up to a pump. This tube here, the out tube, could go right back into the same tank, so you just have it cycling until the water itself gets too warm to use. Could take quite a while, depending on the size of your tank. And that's going to provide a nice cooling feature. It's also on the rear mirror side of it, so you're going to want to build it more towards your rear mirror side. That'll help provide a cooling effect as the gas gets down towards the end of the action here. Another part of this that you can see here is that I ended up putting a uh, pressure gauge on this so that I could actually witness the pressure that we're going to create from this bottle. Uh, that was going to have some nitrogen mixed in from our tea up there. But this will be actually our CO2 production bottle of vinegar and baking soda. The gas goes in. See how well I can show you this. There's a tea back there. I've got it uh, zip tied onto this frame so it's holding on there. It gives me a vacuum pressure on our witness side of it all. Uh, you can see our tubes out the back there once again. So our, our gas is going to come into our, our pressure gauge. It's going to ride all the way down. Let me get out of the, the light here. Into the other side of our laser, which is our front side. It's going to draw that gas all the way through the tube here and back out the other end. And so that's the last thing needed right now for this to be a decent functioning system is we're going to need to now hook this up to a vacuum pump that can pull some kind of tor uh, vacuum on the system. Hopefully past 10 tour up to 15 to 20 tour if we can get lucky without having to actually hook up one of the uh, built models that I've bought from my lasers that I use constantly in my experiments. So I just wanted to walk you through this. Some of the things that are happening here inside of the lasers that we're going to amplify the light. So really what this is is a light amplification system. By bouncing the light back and forth a you know a hundred times, maybe even a thousand, it gains energy by interacting with those high energy atoms of the gas and as it interacts a new photon is given off in the same direction and finally it's going to build up enough energy to fill the tube penetrate our non 100 percent mirror at the front and we're going to get a light beam out the end and this light beam will be invisible to the naked eye and we're going to use an infrared camera hopefully to be able to witness exactly what's taking place here all right, folks, real quickly, I want to walk you through how you could modify the design that I've just showed you how to make to make a more efficient or a more powerful laser system. First of all, you'd want to use a smaller diameter glass tube for your main reaction chamber, for your amplification chamber. The larger glass tube here, larger in diameter than my tubing in the end, is actually going to produce some random photons outside the main beam and cast some of that as a loss. Whereas if you had, like, let's say, a 3 8 inch glass tube that would fit inside of your half inch piping on either side here, you could slide that 3 8 inch onto one side, run it all the way down the length into the other side of the piping, the half inch pipe there, glue it into place and now you would have a, a more efficient laser design because the smaller diameter tube is going to allow for the reaction to all take place within your beam pattern width and that'll create a lot less random photon cast and, and more efficiency. Uh, this design here also, because of the thickness of the glass, there's only so much voltage you can put through this before you actually burn through the glass because once the voltage starts building on the surface of the 
It's like a capacitor, whereas you build up too much charge, it'll actually burn through the dielectric properties of the material between the two plates in a capacitor. The same thing will happen to your glass. And so if you run this too long or with too high a voltage, you'll actually penetrate the glass with that high voltage and create little tiny, I mean, they're microscopic, little carbon lines all the way through the dielectric material. So having a thicker glass chamber on the inside, so if your, your inner glass chamber had an eighth inch wall or a quarter inch wall instead of this really thick thin, I think this is 3 16 you'd actually get a higher voltage uh, capability out of your laser than you would out of this thinner glass also. You could also build this uh, out of a much smaller fluorescent light tube. They have those small diameter ones. That'd be simple to build a much smaller laser. Uh, you'd want to be able to cool the inner core. The problem with the large or smaller diameter core glass tube is that it actually will build up a much higher temperature. So the necessity to cool that inner glass tube is, is higher when it's smaller. The larger diameter will actually reduce the amount of cooling needed to function the same amount of voltage. It's a little less efficient, but the cooling is less uh, necessary for the design.